Ladies and gentlemen, this is a story that came out in my Dayton Daily News. And we all know that most black men in this country go to jail for drug possession. It ain't hardly no damn violent crimes. You know, that's the lie they love to put out there. You know, we know criminalization of black people started the day that we walked off of the plantation all by design so that they would have a reason to put you in prison for the 13th Amendment. It's all tied together. But here we go again. It never makes any sense to me on why they legalize marijuana. And in those states where it's legalized, they're still arresting you for drug possession for marijuana. <sighs> when is this place ever going to make sense? When? September 7th, 2018, Black men are far more likely than any other population segment to face minor marijuana possession charges in the city of Dayton, really all over the United States, according to a Dayton Daily News analysis of municipal court records. This finding comes at a time when the fairness and impact of marijuana laws has become a notable topic because Dayton residents in November will vote on whether the city should cease fines on possessing small amounts of pot. Across the nation, Black people are arrested and cited for pot more often than white people. Decriminalization, supporters said. I think the numbers bear it out that this is a civil rights issue and a big criticism we've continued to have is that drug policy has been unequally applied based on race, said Dayton Mayor Nan Wiley who personally plans to vote in favor of decriminalization. Critics of decriminalization have said it could lead to more substance abuse, which contributes to vehicle crashes and harms job prospects. In other words, they don't want it to go away. They want black men to be the ones going to jail. You know, there's no justifiable reason for it if you are making it legal everywhere then it makes no sense to keep locking people up for that reason. But, you know, they're going to hang on to this for dear life for the obvious reasons. The Dayton Daily News reviewed about 300 minor misdemeanor pot possession cases filed in Dayton Municipal Court in the first quarter of 2018. Minor misdemeanor pot possession was one of the more common offenses in criminal court which police can charge under state or city code. About seven in 10 defendants were black men, according to case information summaries. About 10% of defendants were black women. About 14% were white men and less than 6% were white women. A small number of cases did not have information identifying defendant's race or gender. The average age of people cited for having pot was 30, but defendant's ages range from 18 to 63. Dayton's population is about 55% white and 40% black, according to the US Census. Some advocates of reform Marijuana laws and civil rights group say they hope Dayton residents two months from now will vote in favor of relaxing the city's pot laws. Minor marijuana possession offenses and many of them young people should not be saddled with a criminal record and the lifelong penalty and stigma associated with it said Justin, whatever, Stragel, uh, political director 
All right, let me just go down a little. Critics of decriminalization say removing the penalties for pot could lead to more substance abuse and public safety problems. Montgomery County Phil Plummer recently said employers already have a very hard time finding employees who can pass a drug test. Decriminalizing this illegal substance will only shrink our pool of qualified workers, he said. That will be terrible for our business community. Well, if you legalize it, then there should really be no more testing for it. You know, plain and simple, it, once it's legal, you should be testing for other substances and marijuana should be let go as one of those substances that you're testing for. Marijuana arrest rates across the nation are significantly higher for Black people, even though a variety of research indicates that marijuana use is nearly the same between Black and white Americans, advocates say. The National Survey on Drug Use and Health Survey, conducted by a branch of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, estimated that about 45% of black adults and 53% of white adults in 2016 reported ever using marijuana. Also about 17% of black adults and 14% of white adults say they had used marijuana in the past year, the survey found. So any suggestion that disproportionate rates of arrest or explained by black people using or possessing marijuana more than white people should be rejected. Angelina Jackson, assistant public defender for the Montgomery County Public Defender's Office wrote in an email. Further, I would urge caution in accepting any suggestion that marijuana citations are merely incidental to other arrests. It's basically explaining the disparity by saying black people commit more crimes in general, so therefore they get more weed tickets. And that's just isn't true. In Ohio, about 14% of the adults say they had used marijuana in the past year, or about 1.4 million people, according to 2015 and 2016 National Survey on Drug Use and Health Data. Dayton City Commission last month approved holding an advisory election on November 6 to ask Dayton residents if they wish to decriminalize specific misdemeanor, marijuana, and hashish offenses. If the majority of electors vote in favor of decriminalization, Dayton leaders plan to eliminate the fine of $150 for minor misdemeanor pot possession and the other charges to reduce penalty related to pot, hash, and marijuana paraphernalia violations. The criminalization proposal looks to be a modest but very welcome change to marijuana laws in the Dayton, the city of Dayton. Okay, so let me just go down. Marijuana possession of less than 10, I'm sorry, 100 grams is already a minor misdemeanor a violation of the lowest level, but getting rid of the $150 fine will be very beneficial for those most impacted by law enforcement of marijuana laws, which tend to be people of color and lower income residents, he said. Pardon that. That's my neighbor's dog barking. Sorry about that, y'all. Just came out of nowhere. They bear the brunt of the war on drugs and have for the entire history of the war on drugs, he said. This newspaper's review of municipal court records revealed that many people charged with pot possession do not pay the entire fine on time. People who are cited for minor marijuana possessions and who do not pay the fine and do not show up 
in court face arrest for failure to appear. People get caught up in the criminal justice system that becomes more and more serious over time, Daniel said. You don't show up to court because you don't have the money and are afraid of the consequences, or you don't pay the fine, and then a warrant is put out for your arrest. He also said decriminalization promotes irresponsible substance abuse, which put children and the motor public at risk. You know what, they're no more at risk than people behind the wheel with alcohol. You know, that's how I see it. And, you know, I don't smoke anything. I don't smoke cigarettes or pot, but I don't see why if places, more and more places are legalizing it, I don't even understand why that should even be on the books as a crime anymore. Plain and simple, you know, either it's legal or it's not. If it's legal, then stop arresting people for that reason. You know, they go after black men and black people really because number one, you are not committing the most crimes. Number two, you ain't committing the most violent crimes. So they just get you on anything they can and marijuana is the easiest thing to get black people on. And that, that's it, plain and simple. Anybody else that tells you different, they're full of crap and you shouldn't listen to nothing that they say. All right, um, let's listen to this video. Uh, let me get the sound on. To consider the decriminalization of marijuana uh, according to our code of ordinance. And does that, is there a petition on that or does that just go right, what, right, to, right to the ballot now? It'll go right into the ballot. We've had some folks circulating, you know, uh, commissions uh, talked about it. And really, I think the commission is mostly uncomfortable with it, but we want to hear from the voters and see what's going on the November ballot. You said you supported it. What's the, what's the reason you support this? Look, I think in general that we have proven that our drug policy is pretty wrong-headed when it comes to the criminalization of this effort. We see that nonviolent offenders that do end up going to jail actually become violent at the end. It doesn't really solve anybody's um, um, issues, and it doesn't really make our community. For the November 6th general election uh, in the city of Dayton to consider the decriminalization of marijuana uh, according to our code of ordinance. And does that, is there a petition on that, or does that just go right, what, right, go, right to the ballot now? It'll go right to the ballot. We've had some folks circulating, you know, uh, commissions uh, talked about it. And really, I think the commission is mostly uncomfortable with it, but we want to hear from the voters and see what's going on the November ballot. You said you support it. What's the, what's the reason you support this? Look, I think in general that we have proven that our drug policy is pretty wrong-headed when it comes to the criminalization of this effort. We see that nonviolent offenders that do end up going to jail actually become violent at the end. It doesn't really solve anybody's um, um, issues, and it doesn't really make her then become a misdemeanor in the fourth degree. Under that is a minor misdemeanor. Yes. The minor misdemeanor is usually how the city police go about uh, finding and citing individuals for possession. So that is, in essence, what yeah, we are changing. Right. That fine right now is $150. That will, if this is approved, will be reduced to $0. So that 0 to 100 gram limit will be a $0 fine. Okay. Please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comments.